If you want to buy a home with a low mortgage rate, I'm talking about in the 2%, sometimes even lower than that, but you're unsure on how to do that, then let me tell you about a new strategy I have been using a lot with clients. I'm talking about assumable mortgages. Now, what is an assumable mortgage? Well, not too many people know this, but any government-backed loan, I'm talking about FHA and VA loans, can be assumed. So rather than getting a new mortgage at 6 to 7%, that's what the normal rate is at today, you can take over existing loans on homes the previous owner had. So you can take over these low, low payments that people refinanced to get or purchased back in 2020, 2021, and then you can take these payments over rather than getting a new mortgage rate in the six to sevens, and you can get a mortgage rate within the 2%, which in some cases can save you $1,000 a month, just depending on certain factors and the existing home loan. Sometimes it's only a couple hundred of dollars a month. It really depends on the case. Let me tell you about how this loan assumption process works. And before I break down how this method works, I just wanna let you know I am a licensed real estate agent here in the greater Phoenix area. If you're planning a move to Arizona, I'd love to help you out with that. My name and number are on the screen. Let's jump into this assumable loan strategy. Now, step one is finding the right place. So I've already got a list of homes that have assumable mortgages on them. This is something I set up. I can set up a search and it can directly email you every time one comes on that has assumable mortgages. It's just gonna have to be contacting a real estate agent that can pull the loan origination history, seeing if there is an assumable loan on the property and then going from there. Now, step two is analyzing and evaluating the savings to see if you're getting the right deal. Sometimes this assumable loan method does not work on all cases. Even if they have a juicy 1.5%, 2% mortgage that can be assumed, sometimes it just doesn't work out and I'm about to explain why that would be with an example. Now, for this example, I'm not going to include taxes or insurance in any of the numbers. You're going to be paying taxes and insurance whether you get an assumable loan or an existing mortgage or however you go with it, you're going to be ta paying taxes and insurance either way. So I'm just going to leave that out of these payment numbers just for simplicity. So in this case, say we have a home listed at $450,000. We're going to give them list price just for simplicity of this example. Again, just an example. And they have an existing mortgage of that's FHA or VA, an assumable loan of $300,000 at a 2.5% interest rate. Right now, their principal and interest payment is $1,200 a month. Now, in this case, the seller has a $150,000 of equity that needs to be paid to them. And this is where sometimes these loan assumption deals just won't work for you. This $150,000 needs to be given to the seller in cash. You need to cover the gap between the purchase price and the existing loan amount in cash to the seller. Well, I see this working really well for people who are selling a home and upsizing or downsizing because they already have a ton of equity from the 2020, 2021 years that they've built up and they were planning to use as a down payment. Well, instead of using that money towards a down payment, I would use that towards paying a seller out their equity and assuming their loan. Because no matter how much you put down on a home, unless you're only getting a mortgage for about $100,000, you're not going to get a payment this low on any other standard loan with a six to 7% interest rate. So this is definitely something you want to explore if you are selling a home. Sell your home, use your equity to pay out another seller's equity and assume their loan. And this is written up as a standard offer. So I can send you over homes that have assumable loans. We can pay out the seller their interest and we can assume their rate. It's a very great deal. Well, now let's say you don't have the $150,000 to pay out a seller cash. I do also have a lender who will give you the buyer's HELOC, it's called. It's just a, another loan program. And again, this might be a better deal than just getting a standard mortgage. I'm about to break down these numbers. They will lend you this $150,000 at a slightly higher interest rate. Normally it's at about eight to 9%, just depending on how strong of a borrower you are. But even if you get this loan for $150,000 at an 8% interest rate, that will be an $1,100 monthly payment. Combine that with the $1,200 monthly payment for the $300,000 at a 2.5% rate, and you get a $2,300 total payment for this $450,000 house. Now, say you have 25 grand that you were gonna put down and you were, wanted to buy this home uh, the standard way with a 6 to 7% rate uh, on a standard mortgage. You put $25,000 down and you finance $425,000 at a 6.5% interest rate. You have a $2,700 payment. 
investment. So even if you don't have this money uh, laying around, you know, $100,000, $90,000, just depending on how much equity uh, a seller has in their home, even if you don't have that already, I would still explore this and reach out and connect with this lender to see if this would be a better deal for you. Because if you can just finance that small gap, take over this low payment, and then just make extra payments to that higher interest loan to pay that off as quick as possible, this would still be a great deal. You're still gonna save a couple of hundred dollars a month. So definitely reach out to me. I can get you in contact with this lender and they can kind of see if this is going to be a right strategy for you. And on some homes, it just does not work. Sometimes a, a, a seller has too much equity. They have $250,000 worth of equity and even getting some of it financed and putting some of it down, the numbers just don't work. And sometimes getting a standard loan is the best option. But there are a lot of cases out here that just people don't know that you can assume any government backed loan. And, and there's so many government backed loans out there at 2%, 2.5%. So many sellers are holding on to these low interest loans, not knowing that they can sell this home, take their equity and put it down on another one and assume another loan that is at 2%. Like I said, I've worked with a lot of clients who have sold their home, used their equity and bought another low interest loan. It works really well if you are planning to just downsize, upsize and you already own a home. And then it still can work if you've just saved up a lot of money for a down payment already. And all you have to do when assuming a loan is pay the seller the difference between your offer amount and their loan balance. You just have to take over the loan balance and pay them however much on top of it. With this method, there are typically no appraisals done as well, so it appeals to a seller. Hey, I don't have to get my home appraised. I don't have to worry about an appraisal coming in low or anything like that. So sellers do like doing this. It, it, it still is a pretty good offer when you write it up, obviously depending on what kind of purchase price you come in at, at the offer. But the big pro that a lot of buyers don't even think about when doing these assumable loans is how front-loaded and front-amortized interest payments are are on assumable loans. So when you get a standard loan, uh, you know, it's a 30 year loan, the first three to four years, typically you're making almost all interest payments. Your principal is not going down at all and you're really gaining very little equity. But around year three to four, which is where typically people are selling their home now, and I'll explain that in a second, but around year three to four, you actually start cracking down at that principal. It's not so front amortized in interest. Well, the nice thing about assuming a loan is the seller right now has already paid those first two to three, four years of heavy interest payments. So when you move in and assume the loan, not only are you getting this low $1,200, $1,300 payment, but you're also making a lot more payment towards your principal. So you're gaining more more equity and you're doing it faster than if you got a standard loan, your, you know, your first 12 to 24 months payments are almost all interest. So you're building almost no equity in those first couple of years. That's why people don't recommend buying a home if you're only living there for a year or two because you're not going to build that much equity. But in this case, the seller that you are assuming their loan has already started that process and already made those very heavily interest loaded payments for you. So that is a big pro to this pre that is a big pro to this strategy that a lot of people don't even think about when doing this. Again, all you've got to do, pay the seller the difference between your purchase price and their current loan amount. And I can tell you if the loan is assumable or not. And this could be a great way to save 300, 400, sometimes even $1,000 a month, just depending on if you're financing that gap or if you already have that cap in cash. So my name is Caden Liali. I'm a licensed real estate agent out here in the greater Phoenix area. If you are planning to move out here, I'd love to help you out. I have a free living in Arizona guide, goes through all the suburbs of Phoenix. And again, it goes over kind of different relocation strategies to get out here as well. And I would love to set you up on a search, send you over some homes with assumable mortgages, just another way to save money and, you know, get a 2% rate when they're at six and a half. I mean, who doesn't love that? So my name and number on the screen, reach out to me if you have any other questions and I'll talk to you soon.